Edo is an organization on the University of Saskatchewan campus. Its role is to assist the livestock industry to develop uh, vaccines. That's how it started. What we're trying to do is vaccinate pigs using an already accepted husbandry practice, which is breeding by artificial insemination. We're trying to find nice hands-off ways to vaccinate the animals. So our thought was if we administer a vaccine into a mucosal site like the uterus, perhaps it would be primed to have a very strong immune induction response. Vaccines are very critical in providing protection against diseases that affect pregnancy or to protect the suckling piglets via colostrum. With transition to group housing, there is an increasing difficulty to vaccinate the animals safely for barn personnel and to prevent the damage to skin or breaking of the needles. So that's why we need alternative immunization mechanisms. Majority of the commercial pigs are bred by artificial insemination, meaning that the uterus is accessible during each reproductive cycle. It means that we can capitalize on an already accepted industry practices and can give a vaccine to the uterus. During breeding, pig undergoes lordosis response. It happens in the standing estrus, means in, in that period, pig temporarily uh, immobilized for some time, so we can safely administer the vaccine. With our current knowledge, we, we can formulate the vaccine that do not affect sperm function and fertility as well. The barn personnel insert a catheter into the vagina and it gets embedded halfway into the cervix and you open up the semen bag, insert the vaccine, kind of invert it a couple times, and then just simply stick the semen bag back onto the catheter. And then the vaccine with the semen would get taken up into the uterus. And as it spreads through the uterine horns, you're going to see the semen is there, but also the vaccine particles. So that could be the, um, the subunit protein, as well as the adjuvants. We've done a couple immunizations with just a single dose and we can see that yes, the uterus is acting as an immune induction site, but the, the titers were a little bit low. So we thought with normal vaccines, you tend to have to give them at least twice. So we administered the vaccine a couple times. The idea is that if the vaccine is accepted for use in the barns, we would simply uh, breed and vaccinate at, at every breeding cycle so that we get multiple vaccinations into the animals throughout the, their lifetime. And you've got to remember from fertility to farrowing, it's 114 days. That's a long time if you've got only a two year or three year grant, you've got graduate students that need to progress. So we kind of got a bit sneaky. We administered the vaccine when the animals were in standing estrus, but we gave them the vaccine with semen that we had purposefully killed. We just simply heat treated it so that they were immobilized or weren't swimming. And the gilts, the body recognized that they weren't pregnant. So they went back into standing estrus three weeks later, which is a normal part of husbandry. If you didn't get pregnant the first time, then they'll just breed them the next go. And then we did that again gave them the vaccine with the killed sperm. So that's two doses now. And then three weeks later, again, she wasn't pregnant, went back into standing estrus, and we gave her the vaccine with the live sperm. We allowed the animal to farrow. We measured all their, their piglets' birth weights, the number of live pigs born. We measured how much um, antibodies the piglets consumed from the colostrum. We measured the serum antibodies in the mums, in the gilts. We measured the serum antibodies and the neutralizing antibodies in the colostrum, which is probably the key indicator of whether the piglets are gonna be protected against disease. Everything we looked at was very, very promising that it did look like, yes, the uterus with multiple doses does seem to be having an active immune response. We started off looking at protecting the neonatal piglets by vaccinating the gilts um, into the uterus and then her colostral levels would provide protection to the piglets against porcine epidemic diarrhea virus. Ideally, we would then move towards other diseases that actually affect the gilt herself, such as porcine parvovirus or PERS, which stands for Porcine Reproductive and Respiratory Syndrome Disease Virus, which again, very, very uh, critically important to the pig industry the world over. 
We're at the preclinical stage right now, and within the next couple of years, we hope to finalize the vaccine formulation and then work hand in hand with our industry partners to bring the vaccine forward into clinical testing and vaccine development that can really start making an impact for the swine producers. It's less stressful to the animals. It is less time consuming and less labor cost. It's just a very nice, safe route of immunization that's hopefully going to benefit the industry.